Hello and welcome to episode number 170 of the Savvy Social Podcast. This show is all about helping online business owners learn about the how and the why of social media marketing so that you can make your difference in the world. And if you're looking for a place to start, you got to check out our free course. Yeah, free, all the way free. $3.99. It has so much in there about social media strategy, really simplifying it for business owners, helping you leave with a full plan so that you can tackle social media marketing. We even give you some sweet bonuses like done for you posts. You can literally just copy and paste them and like post them on your social done for you graphics. You can like tweak them a little bit in Canva and just use them. So we're giving you quite a lot for free because we want to give you a sample of what's inside of our Savvy Social School program. So check it out by going to onlinedrea.com slash free. That's onlinedrea.com slash F-R-E-E. Today, I am joined by Jessica Rodriguez. Y'all are going to love her. Jessica is the CEO of Freedom Driven Success. Uh, She is an unapologetic... She's on an unapologetic mission to help online businesses expand beyond one-on-one reliant business models with scalable offers that allow them to amplify their impact and profit without increasing work hours. Y'all know I'm all about that. Not one to shy away from sharing the whole kit and caboodle. The Freedom Driven Success blog is jam-packed with straightforward strategies, behind-the-scenes insights, and powerful insights about what it really takes to run a business that serves you First, her clients to courses framework guides women through their proven framework to break free from their maxed out business models and create sustainability through the power of profitable online courses. Jessica, welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. I'm so excited to like pick your brain today. And when I saw that you met your husband on Mindspace, I felt like a twin. Talk to me about this because social media sounds like it's in your life. Yes. Oh my God. I always joke, like, I guess I knew the importance of a good default photo really early on <laughs> because I I was in college, same town that my husband born and raised in. And me and my roommate were just those people that would go, you know, you friend everybody on my space. Like, it's just fun. And one day we were chatting back and forth on my space. And then we go, why don't we just invite whoever's available to the dorm. Don't do that. (laughs) This is so not safe. But you know, you were in college and you thought it was a good idea. So he wound up coming along with the, his best friend who wound up being the best man at our wedding, another friend, they were playing poker because we brought like other guys in like, Hey, we just invited random people. (laughs) Like, can you guys come as well? And then the rest, as they say, became history. And I'm like, Wow, I really met my husband on my streets. That is so cute. I'm here for it because I met my husband on YouTube and very similar story in that just random strangers. And we were like, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, So, and here we are. Um, Okay. So let's get serious and talk a little bit about your business. And I'm curious about the history of your business because part of it sounds like it started on accident from this, um, this knack that you have for building online communities. Talk to me about that. Yes. So back in 2012, and this feels like forever ago now, right? As far as social media is concerned, I was working four jobs at the time, full-time and then three part-time. And at that point in my life, I was like, you know what? I'm really trying to work on my health goals. And I didn't know anyone around me that was also interested. So I used to spend my days going to like my fitness pal, the message boards and like the forums and things like that. And just, okay, this is me chatting with people online. This is how it works. Right. And then I went and decided, you know what? I don't want my friends and family to be like, Oh, she's on this healthy journey and making comments. So I'm going to make a private um, space and wound up going on fan pages at the time on Facebook So I create this page and I invite anyone over on my fitness pal, like, hey, if you want to follow me, I'm just kind of sharing 
what I'm eating and accountability and just doing it publicly, not even thinking um, that it could be anything. And when I got to, I believe it was about 7,000 followers that were over on that page, somebody had reached out to me and they're like, you do know that you can create a business with, with what you're doing. And I was like, no way. Like people don't really make money online. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> it's like, there is no way that's possible. So she said, well, it's the products you're already using. Go ahead and try to offer them and see what happens. So I put up a post and was like, hey guys, I'm going to do this like accountability type group. If you use the same products I'm using, you're in. I have this many spots all sold out. I was like, wow. Okay. I think <laughs> this could be something. Um, and just majorly fast tracking the story within that first year, I had replaced all of the income of those jobs, went full on in as far as building a business online. So where people do talk about, hey, you could network in person and you can meet all these people. Every business I have built since, whether it was health and wellness, I went into social media, true crime space, now in the entrepreneur space it's always been online because that's always where I felt the most comfortable, the most able to just evolve as I go. Like nothing really feels permanent. It's just, Hey, this is this consistent evolution, just like the platform changes. So do I as a human and Oh my God, there's so much opportunity to build in any space that you're in. Yeah. And I want to talk a little bit about this um, knack that you have for kind of bringing people together and building a community. Where do you think that comes from? You know, I always try to think back because I wasn't the person who was, you know, the popular person with a lot of friends. I was always the so-and-so's friend, you know, that, that type of personality. And I think that actually started to become something that became a strength later because I always like to make sure people are seen or I do my best to try to do that. And what I started realizing, especially because it's been about nine years now in business. So it's been time and looking back and reflecting on different businesses and how they've grown, it always comes down to this core of, you know what, like I always do my best to respond to every person, to remember that person, to see them as a human being versus just another follower. And we have to get X amount or anything like that. And in the process, it created really powerful connections, which then turned into the bottom line, being able to be raised as a result. And that's something where if I was just starting, I would have never realized that's what I was doing. But now looking back, it's, oh, you just keep replicating that same thing, no matter the business is seeing, okay, people, nobody wants to be alone. That's just, that's how we are. I don't want to be alone either, right? Like you want to feel connected to something. So if I can acknowledge each person on a social platform, that's really the same thing people are doing when they're networking locally. So that is the difference maker there. It isn't just putting out content and going, oh, well, you know, people are going to love that. It's no, who are these actual people I'm talking to? Mm, yes. And I, I do find that we miss that sometimes as business owners because of the stories we hear about people going viral and having hundreds of thousands and millions of billions of people consuming your content. When in reality, it all comes down to that connection piece, that one to one piece. Um, but some of the arguments I hear against that is the time argument. So I want, I'm curious just to pick your brain a little bit about how much time you spend on social media. Yeah. So for me, I would say as far as responding to people now, there's going to be some times where you post something and it gets a lot of traction and you're like, Oh, okay. Right. And of course, because I want to respond to everyone and make them feel valued. That means it is going to take some more time for me to personally do it. Now, if I'm talking on an average day, because obviously not all of your posts get as much traction. So if I'm talking about an average day, I would say, and this is throughout the span of a day, maybe about 20 minutes. So I'm thinking more of DMs, responding to people who are you know, commenting under the posts on my feeds, anything like that. Um, and this also comes down to with any business, yes, there's definitely been days where I'm like, 
I'm so glad a lot of people are commenting, but also a lot of people are commenting, right? Like I, I do get those, those things, but my rule for myself has always been, okay, so if you get to a point where that is so consistent that it is too much for you, well, then that is going to be my calling to start bringing in somebody else, introducing them to the audience and allowing them to also connect with that person. So yes, I will need to get support in that way, but I can do it without it feeling like a disconnect to me, which means now having a personal connection with my audience and that person as well as like, Hey, we're, we're both in here because we want to help you. Yes. And it sounds like you've built a really solid and committed audience. I'm curious, where do you think this comes from? Like your audience growth? How do people find you on social media? Or is there something you're doing to bring more people into your community? Yes. So we have a couple of, you know, obviously we've tried some different things throughout the the years. What we do currently, which I think is going to, of course, be more relevant of what we're doing now is I do have somebody who handles, you know, going out and engaging on other accounts. So this is more of liking and we will follow that account. Um, And they know exactly who my ideal person is, who I want to stay connected with. This gives me the opportunity. They are going out and finding the people for me. And then when I am scrolling on social, because we're doing it anyway. So when, when I am scrolling, I'm seeing the people that they have followed. And then I am going in there and taking that 10 minutes. Five, it really, it's a short span of time throughout the day. And again, it's just as I'm casually scrolling anyway, then I am genuinely looking to leave comments because this now becomes such the difference maker in business is you can have a small audience, but if you're connected with them and you genuinely are, you know, saying real words versus just like, yay, like emoji, emoji, like you're taking that time. Well, now we're playing a whole different game because instead of saying, okay, averages is I, if I can convert 2%, you know, here's the numbers, here's what this looks like. But if you have a connected audience and you can be converting even at say eight, 10%, because you took that time to do those small things, then guess what? You actually don't need as many people. So it's really understanding the bigger picture for me that keeps me doing those activities. So I do have somebody on the team that is essentially finding the people because that would take a lot of time for me to like go through accounts and kind of filter through them. Then once I'm following them, then I'm the person that's going to be engaging with them. Um, I am being very consistent with my own content as far as doing two two avenues. So one is going to be my expertise content. So this is what I know, what I do in my business. And then the other side is connection. Now, because I see social media as an ongoing experiment, I know certain topics by now that my audience does connect with. So if I am talking about um, things with my husband, if I'm talking about anxiety and being a business owner and how I've navigated that, um, if I am talking about certain us getting out of debt and stories like that, then that is going to allow those people that are starting to come into my world now go, wait a minute, she's not just like everyone else who helps people create a course, right? Like it's totally different now because I connect with her on a personal level as well, but I'm not just putting myself in this we're best friend zone of just like, oh, I just love watching her. And this is amazing. It's also, I need you to know what it is that I do and how I can support you on a business level as well. So my goal is making sure they are bringing people into my world. I am taking time to engage with them. And then I am being very intentional about the content that I am creating to create that dynamic of them getting to know me as a person and a business owner. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. I have a few follow-up questions because that was like a ton of gems. If y'all are listening to this, pause, rewind, write it down if you have to. Like there's a lot of golden nuggets in there. Um, I'm curious about this person that you've hired. What's their job description? Is this their only job or do they do other things? Yep. So this person only does social engagement for me. So I, I believe she does run under more of a social management title. 
But for me, she only does the engagement piece. Um, I am someone, I like writing content. I love creating content in general. So if she can come in and do that piece, that's the only thing she has paid for. Um, and she does have an agency model set up and that's one of their offerings that they do. Okay. Um, so that's the way we have it structured. And then I have a more of a general VA in the business that she is going into later and scheduling posts and, you know, those type of things for me. So that's someone else, which is a more um, catch all position, right? Has a lot of different things under it. Yes. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And um, y'all listening to, you can get people to help you with the things that you, whatever you want in your business, there's everything out there, even if it's the engagement piece, the content piece, whatever. So I love that you brought that up because I do think um, sometimes as business owners, we feel like we should do it all. You know, like we, especially social media, we feel like every piece of it should be asked. No, you can outsource pieces. That's highly encouraged. (laughs) Yes, I will tell you one of the things I let go of this year, which I never, never would have thought I did. Um, Again, I love creating content. I've always been like, that's not hard for me. That's actually the easiest part of what I do, which that's fortunate. And I'm glad that I'm just created that way. However, I started seeing that, you know what, I just don't have the capacity to create the same way I used to or the same amount that I used to. And it was like, am I going to keep fighting this or trying to wish I was, you know, something else or doing something else? Or do I realize this? So we have a blog that goes out every week. I hired someone to come in and start writing the blogs this year. And I was like, how can someone ever (laughs) write like I do? And literally the first thing she did, I was practically crying because I was like, what? And she goes, I went through, like, I saw your courses and how you teach it. And I followed you for a while. And she, you know, like she just brought everything together. And then I take it and say, okay, now I share two times a week, which is my personal preference for like the blog to link people back to. I share two times a week on Instagram. I write that content, but she did the bulk of the work, which now saves me time. So just know there are so many opportunities where my goal is just to look, Hey, like what feels super light for me? What feels heavy? Do I have the financial resources or do I need to go up my sales to be able to get that to hire someone and get that piece off my plate? And also just because we're talking about social media is also the fact that you don't have to be everywhere either. Right? So where do I just hone in on what I'm really good at if you can't hire people? And if you can hire people, you're still being strategic about who's coming in and for what reason. Yes. Ooh, I love this. I love this conversation because uh, it really helps you to go deeper on those things that truly matter a ton in your business and still get uh, support on the important uh, other aspects of the business, which I love. Um, You also mentioned earlier this concept of, you know, having the smaller audience that's super engaged. And I think you mentioned something like it's better to have um, conversions at 8% versus 3%. I'm curious um, with your audience, you know, what are some of the ways that you track that success, you know, how do you know if this is all working? Kind of let us in a little bit there. Yes. So the thing with this is just like, you know, with social media, there are some things you don't know the direct ROI on, right? Like you can be putting things and even when I pay people and I outsource it, great, they're taking it, but I can't expect this immediate result or even a direct result for some of the work that they're doing because it's such a bigger picture than that. So for me, what I am looking at, um, at least on a monthly basis, I am not very, I'm not worried about the following count in general, just because it's like, it's going to go up, it's going to go down, it's going to go in between, right? Um, I will only look for if there are very dramatic spikes up or down, because that'll allow me to see like, oh, something either really hit um, or the trash took itself out, right? Like, don't you know what it is that I post that, like, got the dip um, in it? It's, like, one of those kind of things um, that can happen. So then from there, what I'm looking at is the engagement and seeing what posts are having that engagement. Um, because I use Instagram, of course, I'm always looking at, okay, based on those posts, how many people did I have 
clicking on the link in my profile. So did that turn into opt-ins? Um, am I seeing that, oh, I'm posting this stuff, but it's not actually translating to growing my list because if that's the case, then I need to change that now. So this is where I'm very big on data over drama. So instead of like freaking out, let's see like what's happening, what we can refine, um, where am I getting the most engagement? And then from there, trying to focus and zero in more on that. So obviously we're seeing reels right now where it's like, everybody do reels. It's like, yes, and <laughs> like, hold on. Let's also make sure, are they leading to your end goal, whether it's signing up for something or joining something, right? Like what is happening there? So I'm looking at that. I'm also just, and this is more of a awareness piece of, am I having DMs going on Instagram? So am I having conversations behind the scenes with people who are interested in the work that I do? So we are actually communicating. If I am getting, you know, crickets throughout, you know, a week span, that's not normal for me. So I'd go, oh, what kind of content is happening? Because if I'm not having that engagement, then that means they're probably not going to be seeing my content when I'm selling something or when I am leading to an opt-in, which leads to a funnel and sell something, right? Like th then I'm going to be missing that piece. So I'm looking at that as well. Um, the other thing that we will do is as we are seeing, and this is always my most fun to be able to catch is when you see the sales come in is starting to look at the names. Because if I scroll through that list, a lot of times I'm like, they follow me on Instagram. I've talked to them in the DMs, like, and it just happened, right? So we could have been talking about our my cats or something, right? Like whatever I was sharing in stories. And then all of a sudden I start seeing their name pop up. And it's like, hold on. Okay. It, it went full circle. Yeah. So it's those kind of things that I'm always just kind of taking a, taking a look at. Oh, I want to talk more about the DMs too, because we have a lot of people who listen to the show and I, I'll put myself in this category who are a little introverted. We don't really <laughs> like starting conversations. We like having conversations. We like being around people, but we're too shy to start a conversation. Do you have any tips for, you know, DM strategies that really can help kick off a conversation, specifically something that is leading towards the sale? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I always come off as extroverted, but I'm very introverted. <laughs> so I'm always like, Oh, I get, it. I get it. Like, it's weird. It's awkward. We don't know what to do. Um, and as I like, and this comes back to connecting with people, the secret is we all feel weird and awkward. Right? Like A majority of us are all doing that. So for me, I always lead with whatever fear I have. So um, one thing, and this is like one of those, how we can leverage a smaller audience um, and maybe a little challenge if you guys want to take this on is if there's something that you do every single day, you grab a cup of coffee, you go into the gym, like something that's repetitive for you is before I would do the thing. So for me, it was going into the gym. Then I would go through Instagram, look at my feed and see like, who's one person that I can DM today. And literally start a conversation with something that I appreciate that I've seen. So this could be something as far as a specific post. And we're not talking about just like, oh, you like dogs? Me too. Like, it's not like so general like that. It's something a little bit more, you know, a little bit more meaty. But how can you genuinely appreciate somebody else? Like, I always call these just DM love bombs. That's pretty much what, I, what I'm doing, okay? So there is no expectation about this. If they don't respond, people are busy. It's fine. Um, but I essentially pick one person, send a DM, and it's something that I saw like, oh, I saw you've been trying reels lately. Like, isn't it so awkward at the beginning? Because at least it was for me. Um, but it gets super fun. Like, how's it going for you? That's it. Just nothing, you know, nothing about that. Um, and this is where mine is probably a little bit different than how some other people do is my DMs typically don't lead like to a sale. So I'll have a conversation just about them, their business, what they're doing. And I only choose people I genuinely have something to say to, you know, so like, here's something we can talk about. Um, and then if I am promoting my opt-in in my stories, something that I'm selling, all of a sudden the name starts coming around. 
Because if I'm sending that DM, just the way the algorithm works as well, is that now they wind up seeing my reel on, you know, their story or my post or, you know, anything like that, because Instagram goes, oh, you must like talking to each other because you have a conversation in the DMs. So that is one of my favorite ways where it's like, I mean, you literally just get to tell somebody they're awesome. Like, that's all we're doing. And I mean, the world could probably use more of that. So you're picking just somebody you're having a natural conversation. There is no expectation, you know, put on that conversation. But it's very interesting to see how it winds up leading into your business without you even having to say your business. So if you're someone who's like me, like when it comes to just straight up selling, I've always been kind of weird about that. Um, So instead, I'm like, well, why don't I use what works? What works is just genuinely talking to people and they're smart enough to be able to see my bio, my links, <laughs> any of my posts that, you know, like any of that other stuff, they will see that as a result. And if they're interested, they're a grown adult and they'll make that decision for themselves. Beautiful. And there's so many parallels in what you said to how we teach it in the school as well, in that compliment people. Be nice to them. Be a human. Start a conversation. Yes, it's awkward. We're all here like awkward turtles flailing around. Mm -hmm. It's okay. And I love that you shared that experience as well, because I think it just normalizes it more because, you know, part of the challenge with social media is that it does feel so polished and perfect. And, you know, everyone's putting their best foot out there. You follow the people who have reels that have like a million cut scenes and outfit changes and way more things than I have time for. Um, and so, you know, when we think about like actual business owners doing this, it is a lot simpler than that. And it is a lot more of that human, um, human connection, which I love. Um so when we're talking about kind of your your process for creating content, for networking and engaging, we kind of talked about the time for the, the networking piece and the DMing piece. But when it comes to content creation, um, how much time would you say you spend every week um, kind of writing those posts or picking an image or designing a graphic or taking a photo? Yes. So just so you guys know, for like background purposes. Um, before I got into business, graphic design was my background. So I do think that plays a little bit to where like, I could create something really quick, right. And like, get it out there. So I always just like to, uh, let people know, but, um, as far as creating my content photo, all of that, it's about an hour for a week's of content. So I am very focused on a pretty set strategy that we have. So this is I know I have that expertise content. So for some, it's going to be a video for you. It's the podcast, right? For me, it's the blog. So whatever that is, then I'm writing at least two posts that link to it because we want to make sure people know there is that awesome content out there. Um, That can be outsourced. I do like writing that. So it's like, okay, even if I outsource that, finally, I still like to write those two pieces. Then I always do at least two is going to be connection content. So that is more your aspirational about you, your life, your beliefs, what you stand for, those type of pieces of content. So that that's four posts within a week right there. Um, And then I will typically have at least one that is going to share my opt-in, right? Like how can somebody go to the next step with me? So that is something that whenever I do create an opt-in, I write a minimum of five different versions of copy just so it's easy. Like when I'm plugging it in, essentially I'm copy and pasting at that point. So that does shorten that time quite a bit. Um, and then the that is what gets scheduled. So that goes in the later, it's scheduled, we're good to go. If I want to do any on the fly, because you know, sometimes you have that that breakthrough and you're like, <laughs> People got to know about it, right? I just had an aha. Then that's any of the other times, right? Like I just leave that flexibility. I don't believe we have to post every day. So it's just like, hey, I have, you know, these like five posts that go out throughout a week. That's fine. Um, And then for me, I really do enjoy reels. Like I like creating them. I have a rule that if it takes more than 10 minutes, I'm out. So like I will usually just... If I'm feeling excited that day, I'll record a bunch, they'll sit in drafts, and then I'll just kind of 
post them randomly throughout the week. So there was no real strategy to that just because I want it to stay just fun, light. I do it whenever, you know, that type of thing. So that's pretty much what the process looks like. And I do that every Monday. So Monday is when I sit down, that's my creation day, anything that needs to be created in business, which that's a piece of it. And then at the end of every month, I sit down and I go, I have a board uh, on ClickUp that I will just say, okay, Tuesday and Thursday is always my expertise. So that's easy. Um, And then I'll choose my connection content. What am I promoting this month? Just so I plan that out. So when I'm sitting and writing, I typically do a week at a time. I can just see like, oh, these are my topics. Okay, let me go ahead with that. Yes. Oh, everything you're saying is so aligned with the way that we teach it here on the podcast and in the school. And so I love having this insider look to how it works for business owners because it can feel sometimes, especially when we start comparing ourselves to content creators, it can feel like we're supposed to be producing so much content, like multiple posts a day, when really it doesn't have to be all that. And we're really focused on the connection piece more so than mass producing tons and tons of content, which I love. I love. Um, I feel like we talked a little bit about trends. Are there any trends that you're loving with uh, Instagram Reels or anything outside of Instagram that you're loving right now? Yes. So with Reels, I have really been just kind of playing with the, you know, if it's a viral sound type of thing. And I am seeing that the reach goes up. Um, there's quite a big difference. I'm also starting to see at least with my account and a couple of people, cause I shared in stories to see if anyone else was having this is that it's almost like there's this void that happens in the afternoon, uh, when it comes to reels. So if I post it anywhere between about like eight to 11 and I'm Eastern, so like eight to 11 or between seven and nine, at night, it gets traction, people are engaging, you know, all of that good stuff. But if I do any time, like in those in-betweens, it's just, it's drastically lower um, with my reach. And this kind of comes into experimenting, right? So I would keep trying and being like, don't be attached, like, just just try it. And then like, mm, another dud, right? Like, and not that it's a dud, but you know what I mean? Like, you're just experimenting with it. So I started seeing that like a trend where I'm like, I don't know if that's my account, but other people started seeing the same. And I'm like, maybe there's something to it. But again, always, and I'm sure you teach the same, like always test with your own account. Right? It's always going to be different. Um, so I'm having a lot of fun with that. And then also just taking like TikTok, especially I'm the person that when COVID hit, I was like, apparently I'm here. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yes, we all were. Yes, I was like, so (laughs) ran out of things to do. Um, So I'm really big over like seeing what's trending there and then taking it over to Instagram. There's something about it. It's like Instagram is always a couple of weeks late type of thing. So if you take that there and see something trending and you move it over, it actually does a lot better for you. Um, Or at least for me from what I'm seeing. So I'm like, I kind of feel like I've never been or never really tried, right? To like keep up with everything that social wants. But that almost makes me feel like I have this little hack. Like, I'm like, oh, look, I could be like ahead because that's going to come over to Instagram next. And like, I can already record it. <laughs> so it's just one of those random things. You find your joy wherever you get it. <laughs> I love that. I'm obsessed with TikTok right now. It's so fun. It's just fun. It feels like old school social media where we're all just here to like do cool things. And it's not all about some marketers somewhere trying to make some money. (laughs) Agreed. And it's very community based. Like if you look at the larger accounts and you read those comments, they're like, I remember when you, this, I remember like they remember all those videos. So it's just another thing of like, we all thrive on connection. So if you are keeping anything you're doing on social rooted in that, and, you know, using that to your advantage, then not only do you sell more, right, which is obviously important for your business, but you also feel better about it because you don't have to just compete with amounts of content. You can instead do a lot more with a lot less. Yes. 
Beautiful. And that actually brings me to your free resources audio guide, because one of the things you teach is how to do a lot more with a lot less, right? Not doing using all of your time, but actually creating an asset that you that works in the background that you can sell at any time. So talk to me about this um, free audio series that you have. Yes. So what I have found uh, throughout the years is that a lot of people fall into that trap of the one-on-one and done for you work. And like, that's how we make six figures, right? We decided like this was some kind of pillar and like, that's how you make it from one-on-one work. So what I wanted to do is challenge people to see, Hey, how can you make that same income or more or whatever you want? So whether it is going to complement, replace or pass your one-on-one income, I want you to have this asset that can work with or without you in your business, which is what courses have done for me. So I have created the Six Figure Course Creator. It is an audio training, which I bet you already like audio (laughs) because you're listening to a podcast um, where we are taking you through exactly what it looks like to have that type of asset into your business. So all of the behind the scenes, there are worksheets, there's a treasure map. We went all out um, with this training and it can be found over at freedomdrivensuccess.com forward slash audio. Beautiful. And I'm going to put that link with the show notes, y'all. You can find the show notes at onlinedrea.com slash 170. Um, so anything we mentioned today will be there, onlinedrea.com slash 170. How do we follow you online? Where do you hang out? Yes. So my favorite place is Instagram. I am in all the places at Freedom Driven Success. And also feel free to come on over to the blog at freedomdrivensuccess.com where we got lots of goodies there as well. Beautiful. And like I mentioned, those links will be in the show notes. Make sure you slide into the DMs. Tell Jessica you heard her on this podcast. I'm sure she will love it. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Yes. Thank you for having me. Yay. This was such a lovely episode, everyone. Uh, Make sure you're following us on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, all of the places. We'd love to see it. Click that follow button so you'll be updated when episodes go live every single Tuesday. And hey, if you love the show, leave us a review or write a comment on YouTube. We love to see it. We love to hear your thoughts. Next week, episode 171, I'm talking all about content repurposing. How do we maximize our content? How do we get the most out of our content? So stay tuned for that episode coming out next week. I will see you then. Bye for now.